Hobes here, back playing some more Planet Zoo, and I'm back in Tigwadu Zoo, back in the night house for the second part of this this little kind of mini series within a series. So this is the following on from the previous episode where we built the red fox habitat, uh, with it mostly being inside, uh, and playing on the playing with the the new Twilight Pack animals. Um, this one, obviously, as you've seen from the title and the thumbnail, is focused around. The common wombat and again i'm continuing that idea of it being mostly inside they are um nocturnal or crepuscapular animals which i think actually i've been sort of have found out since the last episode is mostly about kind of dawn till dusk so animals that exist in that mostly in that kind of space you know and there's a little bit of light but they're um yeah they're not they're not actually kind of strictly nocturnal animals so yeah, carrying on from that from that last episode, um, the same thing of there being these kind of inside spaces uh, with a an optional kind of outside area for the animals to use in the night. So the wombats are really cool little look looking animals. Obviously, quite different to the red fox in terms of their where their kind of native biomes are. So if you don't know this, wombats are a an animal found only in uh, Oceania, so only in Australia. I don't believe they're found in. I'm you know, pretty sure there's no. They're not in New Zealand because New Zealand doesn't have any native mammals. So yeah, you'll find them in. Uh, you'll find them in Australia, and you'll find them in kind of quite a mix of um, kind of mix of biomes actually. So quite sort of you know tropical um, te tends to be a bit more kind of temperate biome. So that's what I'm tending to do in this one. I'm using a lot of ferns. You'll see, just like the, I did in the red fox habitat, I've I've used some pictures in the background, so just to give it, give that kind of, uh, yeah, impression again of the of the the setting of the biome. It's a good little trick that for actually just kind of adding a little bit of depth as well. It makes it feel like the habitat is actually a bit bigger. Something you you do generally see in in zoos is that just kind of that fake backdrop to give it, you know, that you're blending in the, the backdrop in the picture with the foreground that you've got so i'm adding in a as i said they have got an outside space it's actually a fairly reasonably sized outside space you saw you saw that in the last episode as the kind of work in progress bit um so i'm adding a door for them and i decided i don't really know why i just decided i was doing this but decided i wanted some sort of elaborate system for the keepers to be able to open and close this door without going into the habitat not really massively a problem for the keepers to go into this habitat. Obviously, they're not a dangerous animal, but yeah, I thought I'd give them the option to be able to open the habitat from outside in this guest area, actually. So create this little kind of pulley system or implied pulley system. Um, I'm playing around with how I would add this into something that the guests would be able to see, but obviously not be able to interact. So, so it's supposed to be that there's like a, you know, like a turn this wheel, um, and it and it pulls the wire, which you'll see me add in a second, and then that funnels around and lifts the door up. Pretty much the case. And then obviously the thing was then okay. Well, I don't want the guests doing that, so this needs then be kind of kind of something that's locked away. So I've created this little funneled it out actually, it, it sort of just to be a bit of a feature really. I think. Um, so yeah, you see, I've added this little channel and this little kind of inset section. And I've used one of the one of the conserva conservation pack lights there. The lamp has a really good little cable that you can use. So it's a tiny, tiny little detail, but you can see the kind of cable emerging from uh, the tubing that it's that it's hidden away in. So yeah, the idea being that the keepers would just unlock this door, unlock this little mesh, um, and be able to open that door, and give the op give the one back the option to go out into the external area so i didn't show you this in the last episode but this but this actual night house needed some work doing to its sort of surrounding area so this is a stream that runs this is actually the, the origin of the stream that runs all the way through the zoo so if you've seen any of my previous episodes you'll have seen there is a the whole of tigwadu the whole of this zoo is set on a hill it's supposed to be that it's an, an old kind of reused quarry or repurposed quarry um, and so there is a river that runs right through it, um, and it was a it was a uh, to be honest, I, I think I did that in order just to 
a make myself have a little bit of a challenge but also just to add some kind of zip like visual stimulation some, some visual kind of backdrop some interesting things to make it look um appealing and uh and, and pretty so this is the point at which the stream comes into the zoo so i had this previously um set up but it i never actually in the last episode i never actually kind of dressed it so it was never really looking like a good a good um waterfall and this stream comes down through the back of the badger habitat into the tim wolf's habitat from that was i think the first habitat that i added and runs all the way down the hill and eventually will end up at the bottom of the bottom of the slope so here it's coming in this looks a bit weird in the speed build but um, when you see this in in real time, I'm pretty happy with the way this turned out. So, so I'm right up against the edge of the map there. Actually, you can sort of see. You can see a sort of like slightly raised bit of terrain there. That's the edge of the map. So I'm really having to kind of try and hide um, the boundary line there. I want to make sure it doesn't feel like when you're at ground level, it doesn't feel like there's just nothing beyond those trees. So yeah, doing a lot of blending in here. Um, making my way away from the away from the um the night house and kind of over to that that one side yeah and i just wanted this to be a little pretty spot really i mean it's not going to be anything that anyone can get anywhere near guests can't get there and it's all blocked off even from the keepers so i did have some ideas of how i might have this as yeah like a um like a spring or something back here but eventually ended up just deciding i wanted to come wanted it to come down the hill like that i think it turned out all right um and there is some stuff up the top of that that ridge um that we're looking at that's the road and the road um was never finished either so there's some some future plans going on up the top of that road um and you'll see i've added this little so the stream is actually quite high here there's a boundary wall and then you've got a fence line into the wombat habitat Okay, welcome back to the real time tour. So, carrying on from where we left off, left off last time. So, as we come up the path, this is the night house that you saw. It's nothing massively changed over that way, but we have a new little backstage area now. Or, oh, sorry, a new little guest facing area for the wombats. So, it's pretty simple. They've just got, again, like another little access off of this off of this keeper shed quite a little simple little kind of scruffy little backdrop they've got this little shader hanging down off the trees a couple of things they can play with a rubbing post and things that they really like um and then yeah, i kept this all really simple and they've got a little kind of track that goes down down the back here something i decided to incorporate into this habitat as you might have noticed in speed bill was all this was all this bark it would be awesome if we had this as a like a placeable thing but i'm using one of the paths here so i've kept it isolated from the rest of the guest path so that so that's not something that they can come across and then i'm using the um the exhibit entrance these hanging plastic hanging things as as my um, entrances now as well as the door that you've seen before so just give you a quick little look through at the uh, at the waterfall back there, so you can see that all. I'm now playing on pause, and I think I will indefinitely be playing on pause. But I think that that's that's come out pretty well. It's got maybe a little bit of little bit of polishing and things to do to it still. As ever, it's never finished. This little this little bit here. Then I don't think I showed you this from the last episode, but this little bit here is the mechanism that opens and closes the or the implied mechanism that opens and closes the fox's door so that again you can let them in and out from not being inside their habitat not massively important to be honest that one because the, again the foxes are not a i think the fox would probably be an animal that a zookeeper would quite happily go in the in the habitat with but i'm not entirely sure so let's carry on back inside the door so yeah, back inside the inside the night house. If you saw the last episode, you'll remember this is all yeah, all kind of like dark and gloomy and no natural lighting in here. I think it's I think I'm kind of happy with the way it's turned out. 
So yeah, the foxes, as we added in the last episode, I did get a really good comment actually about a little note about no flash photography um, in the last video. So yeah, thank you very much for that sort of thing. It's always really welcome. And if it's a good idea, or well, I think I can do it, I'll incorporate it in. So there's a couple of those. Um, I'll make sure to put those up on the workshop. But yeah, as you can see, we have the fox, the foxes on the left. We have a couple still empty um, areas or blocked off areas that are under construction. They'll obviously be in the next episode or upcoming episodes. And then here is our wombat. So here's the inner space for the wombat. And you can see that the, the carpet is continuing round to that, that way, which obviously will be where we're heading next time. Um, oh, there he is. He's hanging out. He's hanging out inside. So, yeah, he's hanging out in... <laughs> it's quite a small space. But again, as I said before, I want to keep these habitats fairly small. It's definitely... Uh, the overall habitat space is under the requirement for the animal. But it tends to be the way I've gone always with a little bit of Tigredoo. It's not too massively under. Obviously, if it was just this inside space, that would be a little bit unfair on the animal. But... With the outside space as well, it's not too bad. Um, but yeah, so there's all the there's the kind of that that bark and stuff. And I think that's worked out quite well. As you can see, the pictures end up feeling like they're all part of the same um, backdrop. There's my little wheel thing. So as I said, you open the door. I'm not going to open the door, and it pulls the, the theory is that it pulls the the that's like drawbridge kind of um, drawbridge kind of door. Um, and yeah, I continued that design that I did over um, previously uh, over here. Continued that on this way. Continued the air ducts and stuff. Um, and then I did have a little bit of a go. I did have found this was one. <laughs> the, the wombat's face is not one that's that easy to do as a geometric design. So I have done something very basic and a little kind of Australian map just for this wall. But I think I'll probably do a ge geometric design for some of the other animals. But the um, the wombats don't have that. They're not that easy to do for these sorts of things. If you find a good, um, a good reference picture, do let me know. Someone in the comments let me know. So, and we have a... I'll go inside the habitat, but it continues around this way. So I did add this little implied access way around the side here. Just something really simple, a little little hose and a you know, it gives you the gives you the view back towards the river or to the stream. And then this is how you'd come into the side of the habitat. So yeah, I think it turned out alright. I feel I feel like the um the the rubbing post and stuff works really well in here as well. Just about enough space for him to kind of get around and hide and things they're super cute so thank you very much for watching guys my name is Toes. do not forget to like and subscribe and i shall catch you on the next one take it easy